The first section we'll talk about is mixtures and pure substances. Mixtures contain two or more pure substances. Mixtures do not obey the law of definite composition and therefore the relative amounts of each substance can vary depending on the sample. So let's take a look here at the difference between the pure substance water versus a mixture of salt water. So pure water contains just H2O, okay? And does obey the law of definite composition. A sample of pure water is always 89% oxygen, 11% hydrogen. And it has to be separated using chemical means. Whereas a mixture of salt water, so salt water doesn't only contain H2O, but also contains a variety of ions, calcium ions, sodium ions, chlorine ions. And the composition of salt water varies by mass. So some samples of salt water may have a higher salt content than other samples of salt water, but we can separate the salt ions from the water using physical means. So mixtures can be separated using physical means, while most pure substances cannot. Uh, there are some exceptions, so thermal decomposition of certain pure substances such as metal carbonates and metal chlorates. Mixtures can be separated by a number of physical means. Chromatography is used to separate different liquids based on their different rates of flow on chromatography paper. Distillation is used to separate liquids based on differences in boiling points. Evaporation is used to separate a soluble solid from a liquid. And filtration is used to separate an insoluble solid from a liquid. Mixtures can be classified as suspensions, colloids, or solutions based on particle size. So on the left here, you can see that suspensions have the largest particle size, greater than 1,000 nanometers, whereas solutions have the smallest particle size, less than one nanometer, and colloids are the particle size in between. In a suspension, you might see the particles settle out, while you wouldn't see that in a colloid or solution. Suspensions are homogeneous, are not homogeneous, okay? Whereas colloids and solutions are homogeneous. Okay. Uh, similarly, solutions do not display the Tyndall effect. The Tyndall effect is what you see um, when you shine a light and the light, um, the particles in the colloid or the suspension scatter the light. So we'll see an example of that in a second. And <clears throat> the method of separation is chosen based on what type of mixture it is. So in a suspension, since it's not homogeneous, you can use filtration to separate it. So think of um, using a coffee filter to separate out a mixture of sand or um, coffee from water, right? The water will drip through the filter, but the particles will stay in the filter, okay? Colloids, the intermediate particle size, the particles don't settle out, so we can't use filtration, but generally we can use distillation, which again separates particles based on uh, boiling point or evaporation where we can evaporate um, liquid from a solid solute. Same thing for a solution, okay? Colloids and solutions are very similar. They are homogeneous and they use similar methods for separation. The big difference is that colloids have the Tyndall effect while solutions do not. And so that is generally the key distinguishing factor to tell them apart. Uh, you can click here if you'd like to see a short animation of the Tyndall effect. 
And as we move forward in the presentation, you'll see some examples. Let's look a little more closely at suspensions now. Due to their large particle size, suspensions can often be separated by filtration. So let's look in this test tube here at what's happening. When you uh, mix aqueous solutions and form a precipitate, the suspension is created between the solid precipitate which settles out in the remaining aqueous solution. Proper filtration can be used to separate the precipitate so that it's separate from the liquid, the solution, that's called the supernate. Okay, so you can separate the precipitate from the supernate using filtration. Other examples of suspensions other than this uh, precipitation reaction would be sand in water and snow in air. Due to their smaller particle size, colloids cannot be separated by filtration. However, the particles in a colloid don't settle or dissolve in the greater medium, in a solution what we would think of as the solvent. A classic example of a colloid is fog. The water droplets in the air do not dissolve in the surrounding gas, but they also do not settle out. The Tyndall effect is easy to see when driving through fog because the light from headlights gets scattered by the particles of water, which you can see um, in this photo here, um, as these little scattered sunshine on a foggy morning. Solutions contain the smallest solute particles, and those particles dissolve into the medium, which we call the solvent. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures. And what that means is that regardless of the sample size, the ratio of solute to solvent remains the same. In other words, the solute particles are evenly distributed all throughout the solvent. So if I took a sample from the top of the solution, or as you see here from the bottom of the solution, the ratio of the solute, which in this case is demonstrated in purple, to solvent demonstrated in green would be the same. This is different from think of like the suspension of sand and water. If I had sand and water, the sand would be all settled down here at the bottom, right? And then we would have water. So down here, the concentration of the sand would be higher than up here. So we would call this not homogeneous, whereas a solution is a homogeneous mixture where the solute evenly dissolves and distributes into the solvent. Salt water is a classic example of a solution. The sodium ion and chloride ions are dissolved in the solvent, creating a uniform material. Due to their small size and interactions with the solvent, the solute particles cannot be filtered out. How could you physically separate solutes from solvents in a solution? Well, we use other methods of physical separation, things like uh, distillation, so we could distill it, distillation, or evaporation. So you could imagine in the solution of salt water, evaporating off the water, and you would be left with the sodium chloride crystals in the container. 